So in week five, um, you deal a lot with the manager and the media. And obviously, this is an awesome, a, a very exciting probably week. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. what are some of the, the, the things that you, you try to pull out, uh, Chase? The central lesson of that week is that good public managers take the media seriously. And they have a well-developed media strategy. It isn't simply being on your heels all the time. Mm -hmm. So when they start sharpshooting it, you know, you can kind of handle those questions. You will be sharp shot. I mean, everything isn't going to be perfect. Somebody's going to screw up in your agency. But that's not the point. Uh, you First, you've got to take the media seriously. Secondly, you've got to bring somebody in with you who is an excellent communications person. That's what Jackson did, for example, when he became Revenue Commissioner. Uh, a guy named Harry Durning was a long-time uh, reporter and editor of way up the North Adams Transcript, an extremely talented, capable guy. Um, and Jackson understood how important to him an effective media strategy was. Why? Because it's the most effective and the least expensive way to communicate with a public which, for one thing, has to pay its taxes voluntarily, and for another, comes into this picture with a very jaundiced view of the State Department of Revenue since a number of its people have gone to jail and one of them committed suicide, the number two guy in the department. And uh, the employees of the department are so embarrassed they won't even tell you where they work. So you've got terrible morale within the agency. And by the way, good press is press that your employees read. And that's important to them the sense that they're part of an agency that's that's doing well and being recognized for doing well. And how do you explain that to them? Well, you can use, you know, you can use email and regular newsletters and all that kind of stuff, but if they read it in the Globe or the Herald or the New York Times or whatever, it makes a huge difference. Um, but at the same time, you've got to turn around a very skeptical public, which is basically saying, why the hell should I pay my taxes when these guys are stealing or robbing or, you know, being bribed or whatever. And that was a huge task for Jackson. How do you do it with the press? Then he discovers, among other things, that we've got restaurants all over the state that aren't paying the meals taxes. They're taking them from you and me, but they're not paying them. And the best way to do that, to deal with that, is to basically say to them, we're gonna lock you up and padlock the place if you don't. Uh, then you show up with the cameras who are taking pictures of the van. And then he discovered all these yacht owners who uh, apparently had hired some genius of an accountant who had concluded that if they registered their boats in Delaware, they could avoid Massachusetts sales tax. And that's just a completely incorrect interpretation of the law. But can you imagine what the TVs were like when Jackson and his folks were down looking at all these yachts that said Dover, Delaware, and Wilmington, Delaware? I mean, it was, and by the way, created a lot of goodwill on the part of taxpayers generally, most of whom do not have million dollar yachts. Um, but how did he do it? By the very effective use of, of the media. And it wasn't just going after the tax evaders. One of the things he wanted to do was to encourage voluntary compliance. How do you do that? You offer free tax preparation services at revenue department offices. How do you communicate that? How do you let people know? Using the press come to us and we'll sit down with you. You don't have to pay anybody. You don't have to hire an accountant. Come on in and we'll help you prepare your tax returns. Um, getting refunds back quickly. It used to take three or four months for you to get your refunds back in this state. I mean, it was a tax-free loan to the Department of Revenue in the Commonwealth. That's basically what it was. Jackson said, we're going to get them back in two weeks or less. People thought he was crazy. Twelve days, that was the average. And he would bring in the first couple of the first taxpayer to file their returns and there'd be a big ceremony and a lot of press and giving them their ref you know, refund check and all this kind of stuff. Um, so what's the point of all of this? That, that an essential part of his job was the effective use of the media in order to help him do his job better and achieve better results. Most public managers don't understand this. They wish the press would go away. You know, the less, the fewer of those folks around, the better. Can't do that in the public sector. So you can either be back on your heels all the time, or you can take <coughs> the position that, that an essential part of achieving your goals is managing your 
media relations and having a media plan and a strategy that is constantly trying to advance what you're doing. I mean, not for your glorification, but as a way to to do the job effectively. And when you think of the number of things that public managers do, take lead poisoning. We know that serious lead poisoning can affect the cognitive development of kids for life. We know that. And we know how they get the lead in their system. One of the things Chase discovered was that the most effective, he could send inspectors out and do all that kind of stuff, the most effective way to protect kids from lead poisoning was to communicate with their parents who in turn would make sure that they wouldn't do it. How do you do that? He did radio spots. He did radio spots. Or for that matter, TV or whatever. Um, and these days you can use the social media to some extent to do that, although you're dealing in this particular case probably with folks who may not be computer literate or use computers. Well, there are other ways to do that. He found radio to be an effective one. But isn't that interesting? He wasn't question of hiring another thousand inspectors, it was connecting with parents and mothers in particular and helping them to understand what's lead poisoning, what impact can it have on your kids, and how do you keep them away from gnawing those window sills and that kind of stuff with that old lead-based paint, and how do you how do you connect with, with public agencies that will de-lead your apartment and stuff. It's all about the press, and, uh, and we have a lot of fun with this, but, uh, but it's it's, it's just so important that managers take that seriously, and a lot of them don't. I mean, a lot of them are uncomfortable with the press, they're defensive with the press. Uh, you know, as I say, they wish they'd go away, but they're not going to go away. Um, and the best way to, and nor are you going to co-opt them. I mean, don't think you can manipulate these folks. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, a media strategy and a plan which strengthens and enhances your ability to do what you're trying to do as a public manager. You'll have your moments, but as he says, if you do the media, if you if you take your media relations seriously and you get lots of positive and affirmative kinds of press, inevitably when somebody screws up in the agency and you're under under the gun, people will cut you a little slack. The press will cut you a little slack because, as Chase says, you got money in the bank from all that other stuff that people have been reading about and responding to, which is which is positive. So it's a it's a big part of the manager's job, and it took me a long time to figure it out, but it's, it's real.